Welcome back to Football Ledger guys. Today's video is gonna be a little different from what I usually upload. We'll discuss the controversy that happened in the Valencia vs Real Madrid game at the Mastaya. Now I would normally avoid making videos about referees and the controversies created by VAR but what happened in this match was a really weird thing which I have not seen happening throughout my time watching professional football. So I wanted to spend a couple of days before I upload this video so things can cool down and we have a better understanding about what the people in the world of football are saying about this incident. And before we start talking about this match a little background so you guys can understand the context better. Last year when this fixture happened, it was again a controversial event because of the racist chants and comments the Valencia fans had against Vinicius Jr. It was a major controversial event in Spanish football. Even the Brazilian president spoke against what happened at the stadium. In the end, Valencia won that match by one goal. And when both the teams met again at Real Madrid's home ground this season, Real scored five goals past Valencia and Vinicius scored a brace. So people have this feeling that it's going to be a hostile environment for the player at Valencia. A Brazilian channel which was making a documentary on Vinicius were not permitted to take their cameras into the stadium. Some posters came before the match which were let's say a little provocative. Even the Valencia players said that the fans will express their emotions against Vinicius. So it was always going to be a heated encounter and this is what happened during the match. The match began and Real Madrid had somewhat control of the game for the first 15 minutes but the crowd was on it and every time Vinicius got the ball the fans were whistling, booing, shouting, they were being as loud as possible. The pressure was mounting and Madrid started making mistakes at the back and Valencia scored not one but two goals. The second goal was handed to Yaramchuk on a plate by Danny Carvajal and Real Madrid did what they normally do. They started fighting back. They somehow scored a goal before the end of the first half and the second goal in the 76th minute and ironically both goals were scored by Vinny Jr. Now on a side note, Vinicius sometimes can be a little provocative and the opposition players and the fans can feel somewhat annoyed because of his antics. But in this match, he was not doing any of that. He was not questioning referees, he was not fighting against the players, no dancing celebrations, nothing of that sort. So it really felt like the goals he scored were well deserved and Real Madrid as a whole were attacking well towards the end. Valencia maintained a low block and somehow defended them but it felt like sooner or later the third goal will come. It was a high tempo game which had its fair share of drama towards the end. There was a penalty call against Real muttered by the referee, which was correctly called back by the VAR. Valencia's defender Diaby had a horrific knee injury. The players were looking devastated and all of this was happening during the extra time. And in the last minute of extra time, Real Madrid received a corner. And this is what happened. Modric took the corner and the ball was not cleared by the Valencia players. Referee looked like he was about to blow the whistle but he did not and the ball went to Brahim Diaz who crossed the ball into the box towards Jude Bellingham. The ball was in the air and the referee blew the final whistle and Bellingham headed the ball and started celebrating. The Valencia defenders felt that they've lost the match but the referee, because he whistled before the ball went inside the goal, said that the goal will not stand. Real Madrid players went crazy. They started arguing with the referee. The referee showed the red card to Jude Bellingham. Everyone was confused as to what was happening and this is how the match ended. Now I'll give you my take about the whole controversy before we start discussing about what people said. So as a referee, when you have given 7 or 8 minutes of extra time and a lot has happened during that time, first of all you should be open to extend the match a little because of the time that was wasted. Secondly, if you are going to blow the final whistle, make sure the ball is cleared or it is not very close to the opponent's half or at least the players are not attacking the goal but the whistle was blown after the cross was made and in my opinion if you have waited till the cross then wait for that attack to end now i understand that the referees are human and can make mistakes and according to me that's that gil manzano blowing the whistle at that point was a mistake now do i think that the goal should have stood no because that's what the rule book says the ball went inside after the whistle was blown and for that reason it was not a legal goal. But should the referee have blown the whistle at that point? No. If he wanted to end the game early, he should have blown the whistle while the ball was not in an attacking position. So in my opinion, Real Madrid were robbed of all three points. Now let's see what the people from the world of football said about this incident. And first off, we'll go through Real Madrid's official statement. They wrote an unprecedented referee decision by Gil Manzano stopped Real Madrid's win against Valencia in Mastaya. They also wrote that in the last play of the match, Brahim crossed the ball and Bellingham made it 2-3. But referee annulled the goal by pointing out the end of the match when the pass was in the air. Now you can read the full statement for yourself. But the point to discuss here is, I have been watching football for some time. Also, I have been active in the social media specifically related to football. And I have not seen many official statements coming from the club themselves pointing at the referee's mistake. Real Madrid was not like referees should make good decisions or VAR should improve. They straight away said that the league leaders deserve 3 points but they only got 1 and that's because of the referee Gil Manzano. Now Real Madrid do this in Real Madrid TV where they point out the mistakes referee made against them especially before the matches which I don't say is good but it's like building indirect pressure on the referee and also limited number of people watch that but in this case they want to be direct. It's like they want everyone to know 
that this draw or the loss of points is not on the players or the coach. They did their job, but it's because of the referee they lost two points. So that's that. Now let's talk about what Valencia forward Hugo Duro said. Now I remember in his post-match interview, the English translator saying that the ref told the players before the corner that this will be the last play of the match. And he ended the match accordingly. So in a way Hugo Duro was trying to normalize the decision made by the referee. And I see a lot of Valencia supporters saying the same thing. And I can understand that they are Valencia supporters and what happened was not illegal. So it's a point on their favor and I understand that. But the same player also said that I understand Real Madrid's complaints. Either the ref blows the whistle before or not. Not at all. And it's not even me saying, La Liga posted this. Now he obviously cannot go and say against Valencia that referee should have waited for the move to end. But based on his statements, it seems like somewhere he understands the frustration of Real Madrid. Even Mateo Lajos, a former La Liga referee said that Manzano's decision was a systematic error and for me it is ignorance of the game. So even his colleagues are not agreeing with what he did. I even read that the technical committee of referees is planning for some action against Gil Manzano. So let's see what happens there. Now I can show you posts and tweets from Real Madrid players and supporters, but that would be completely one-sided and we won't get a clear idea. So let's go through some statements given by the neutrals. Stevie? Absolutely horrible referee. Mm. I mean, just, it makes no sense mm. that you second-guess yourself and then you see that the ball is being crossed and then you decide to blow the whistle. It's just horrible referee. Mm. Now, now on a side note, I'm not pointing at any specific channel, but I have not seen pundits normally favoring Real Madrid in these situations. And this clip is from ESPN FC. And for the people who don't know, that was Stevie Nicole, a former Liverpool legend. He's won league titles and Champions League with the club and have also managed clubs at MLS. Now I have not seen Stevie favoring Real Madrid. In my opinion, he has been an unbiased pundit. Now he does favor Liverpool for obvious reasons and we understand that. But I have never seen him support Real Madrid in any 50-50 situation. So him saying that referee should have waited and that was horrible game management does show that whistling at that point was not the best decision. <laughs> it's a very bad timing. You know what? I, I think that he got his, he said that in the first 45 minutes, in the last second of the mm -hmm. first 45 minutes, Valencia was attacking. They were inside the box and he whistled. He had that in his head and he, saw, and he thought, if in the first 45 I didn't allow it, I'm not going to do it. Of course, it's not allowed the, the goal, but definitely it's a very bad timing for, uh, for the whistle. Now that was Luis Garcia, a former Barcelona and Atletico Madrid player. Even he said that it was a very bad timing by the referee. But he also pointed an important point, which is the referee did the same thing in the first half while Valencia were attacking. And yes, the referee did that. But I want to share two points here. Firstly, Valencia were leading while the first half ended. And when you stop the game in the first half, it's a different thing because both the teams have another half left. So they will get more time to equalize or score more goals. But it's not the same when you blow the final whistle. So if he did on the cross, that's a terrible mistake, yeah. So the guy is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now that was Frank Leboeuf, a former Chelsea, Marseille and French international player. Bad decision on his part, maybe, but you can't Why, talk about that. Why is it a bad decision? Well, I, for me, I would have liked to see the play continue. Yeah, but how, for how long? Again, how many phases? How many phases do you wait? Because if, if Bellingham's header is saved by the keeper and the ball comes back and Real Madrid are still attacking and are about to cross, do you let, do you let play again? And then how many times? Now Jules is saying that he's fine with referee blowing the whistle because for how long should he continued the game? Now I don't agree with that. Firstly, because it's not like referee showed a 3 minute extra time and the game continued for 10 minutes and he had to somehow end the game. The extra time given was of 7 minutes. They continued for a couple of more minutes and the game had more stoppages in between that which was of more than 2 or 2 and a half minutes long. And also because of the simple fact that throughout my time watching football, if a team is attacking, the referee waits for that attack to end. I have not seen any referee in a professional match stop the game while ball is in the air in the opponent's penalty box and that's what I believe and with that we'll end the video let me know your thoughts let's have a discussion on this I'll respond to every single comment like the video if you found it interesting and subscribe to football ledger see you on the next one ciao